Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now with the news of the upcoming Steam machine, I thought I'd have a go at creating my own one. I recently won this in an online auction for £429. We've tested one all a few years back now. This is the Minis from HX90G and I've always really liked the small form factor plus the really quiet operation. I thought it would be a perfect starting point to create a custom steam machine that I can plug into the television in the garden office and play a few of my favorite, albeit perhaps lightweight titles. So this has a Ryzen 9 5900HX, eight cores and 16 threads, as well as Radeon 6600M graphics. From what I've seen of the official steam machine, the graphics in that seem to be closer to a 7600M, but I think for the price, this wasn't too bad. Now, of course, we need to install SteamOS itself. We have a few choices, Bazite, Nobara, the official SteamOS from the website, and that is the one I went with. I've never used SteamOS on one of these little mini forum machines, not one like this anyway. So I thought we'd install the official SteamOS today, just out of curiosity as well, to see how well it runs on this thing and see how it handles a few of my games. So the first thing we need to do is install SteamOS and to do that we go to the Steam website, download it and then we get a disk image which we can flash to a USB using Rufus. It's also suggested that we download Rufus in the installation instructions. So I did this, I opened up the disk image, I didn't unzip it, I just put it straight on the USB. This took a couple of minutes and once that was done we were ready to plug the USB into our mini machine. The first thing I did when I turned this on was hit the delete key rapidly uh, to get into the system's BIOS and it's there. I turned off secure boot as is suggested by the instructions. As I said, you don't have to use SteamOS. We have had some experience with Bazite here on the channel and Nobara as well. Both decent options to get that sort of Steam big picture experience on a larger display. And I think either of those are gonna run well on this system as well. But considering this is an all AMD hardware machine, SteamOS should run really nicely. Now you'll get to this screen after all that text has finished scrolling along the black screen. You may get a system restart and then we'll be greeted with this. So just double click the wipe device and install Steam OS option here. Now we've also covered the installation in my uh, installing Steam OS on a budget gaming PC video, but I thought I'd briefly run through it again. So we're gonna click proceed on this little dialog box. And once again, we're gonna get a load of text. The system is going to restart. And after that, we should have Steam OS installed. As you can see here, again, excuse the huge unnecessary display. This is great for editing, by the way, but uh, not so much for gaming on a 6600M because that probably won't be able to handle this 5120 by 1440 resolution. Now from here, we just go through the steps, follow the instructions for language, uh, internet connection. And once that's done, well, you should be ready to go. I've also plugged in my PlayStation 5 controller or connected it via Bluetooth. I should say, which works absolutely fine. I've plugged the machine into the TV outside now, and as you can see, we're looking good. We also retain and can switch to the desktop interface as well, which will allow us to use Firefox and install other third-party launchers like GOG, for example, if we wish to use those. Heroic Launcher comes to mind, which lets us use Epic, GOG, and Amazon games. Because I'm gonna be using this primarily with a controller, I'm sort of going for the more straightforward, a simple experience. So I shall be keeping this machine in uh, the standard big picture mode. And it will boot into this when we turn it on as well. It's running really smooth and fluently on the HX90G with the Ryzen 9 and the 6600M. You might find that when launching a game for the first time, you'll be hit with this processing Vulcan shader screen. This may take a while, depending on the game. With God of War, it took like half an hour. But after that, all my other games started up and loaded just fine. Now, there may be a few exceptions to this. Certain games with anti-cheats like Battlefield 6 won't work. Uh, GTA 5 also has some sort of anti-cheat, so we can't go online, but we can play the single-player mode. Uh, this machine, for me, though, is more about just those sort of easier-to-run, older, less demanding titles. Titles that I've probably started at some point in time, but have never got round to finishing them. And it's going to be nice uh, to sit down and 
just play this every so often. I also have the PS5 set up, as you can see here, and it seems almost like we shouldn't be running God of War on the Steam machine when we've got the PlayStation 5 set up next to it. I feel like the PlayStation 5 is giving me a bit of side eye right now, giving me evil. It's like, why are you running it on the uh, on the 6600M Steam machine? Yeah, our first game, God of War, on the custom Steam OS gaming machine, 60 FPS, constantly at 1080p and that's what I've targeted throughout a locked 60 with 1080p resolution this is with the original graphical preset so I said I didn't want to throw anything too intensive at this machine this is just for those casual games games that I already own on Steam and that's another reason why I'm playing them on Steam instead of the PlayStation 5 because I own them on Steam I've bought them before for testing in various videos or for various benchmarking scenarios and I thought why buy them again sometimes I think I just want to sit down with a controller blasphemous I know and play through a few of my favorite titles and I think should I buy it on the PS5 or fire up the PS4 and buy a few old games that way and then I thought to myself no you know what I'm gonna get myself a slightly older mini PC something that's still somewhat capable and use that instead. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 is our next tested title and as you can see 60 FPS here locked once again a few hiccups every so often but with FSR 3.1 quality mode enabled at 1080p it's looking good and it's feeling really smooth to play. I also have The Witcher 3 running here. This is with the Ultra preset, albeit with screen space reflections turned off. It's going to run at a locked 60 FPS once again at 1080p resolution. This is actually a 4K display, so we could run games at 4K and then just turn on FSR if we wanted to, but I preferred sticking to 1080p natively where I could, and that is something that the 6600M can handle, especially in these older and uh, easier to run titles. GTA 5 Enhanced runs with the high RT preset. I think things are a little bit oversaturated here. I didn't play around with the color calibration before I plugged this in, so all the characters might look a bit orange, like they've all got a really bad fake tan, but hopefully you still get a good idea here. I'm actually using this with FSR 3 native at 1080p. It still looks nice and sharp on my 4K display here, running at a locked 60 FPS. Um, there were a few dips and drops in GTA. That was the most overdramatic dive out of a vehicle I've ever seen. Things that are going to make the frame rate drop in this case are like grenade explosions. I'll just show you quickly here. So we throw a grenade, we blow up all these cars. We'll throw a couple. And yeah, you're going to see a couple of dips and drops. Oh, it dropped to 58. That was it. So yeah, not really an issue at all, to be honest. 56 then. or oh, 53 it dropped to then. But that was the most significant dip I noticed. Now to finalise for these tests anyway, we have Red Dead Redemption, the original game. I played it through on the PlayStation 3 uh, years ago when it first came out, as well as the Undead Nightmare expansion. Been meaning to play through it again, and I thought, what better machine to do that with than the Steam OS custom machine plugged into the TV. So this is running really nicely with the Ultra preset, FSR 3 native. We probably could have pushed this to 4K and ran it without any issues. I do plan to do a few more tests with this setup, but I wanted to get an initial idea of how well it would run SteamOS. Uh, the answer to that is actually really smoothly. So hopefully we'll throw a few more AAA titles at it soon and see how well it handles itself. But this is a sort of ideal a lower cost system uh, for those less intensive games and I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I think we'll also put together a custom Steam machine as well uh, on a maybe lower budget, install something like Bazite or Nobara, see how well it runs things. But as for this one, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to testing this out in a few more releases. I don't think this is quite as powerful in terms of graphical power as the real Steam machine will be of course but whenever that comes out whatever it's priced at we'll have to get one test it out with a few titles and hopefully there's a lot of fun to be had there as well but as for this one well i hope you've enjoyed this look at my uh, attempt at creating my own system uh, with steam os and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one